Welcome to Holy Trinity in Air and to this service for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. In our service today, the Reverend David Easton is our preacher and after the communion, Andrew plays Jesus We Are Here by J.S. Buck. And our hymn is a hymn by Charles Wesley, Oh, for a heart to praise my God. And so welcome to Holy Trinity. Welcome to our service at Holy Trinity on this, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Wherever you may be, welcome. In our service today, we hear the parable of the sower and consider how we might prepare ourselves to receive God's word, how we may allow it to bear fruit in our lives, in the lives of others, and in our service of one another and our community. And so as our service begins, let us still ourselves, our hearts and minds, that we may be open to God's Spirit and His Word to us. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We meet in Christ's name. May we know His peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in our world. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. As our service begins, we join in our prayers of preparation and in the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are his children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because he loved us first. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and faith as we trust in his love, in his mercy, and in his grace. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And God who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Another collect, the prayer for today, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you good things no eye has seen. Pour into our hearts such love of you that by loving you in all things and above all things, we may be worthy of your promises which surpass all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And now our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, 
and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit, and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. And our sermon, which is today preached by the Reverend Dr. David Easton. Often, a good way to engage with the parables or events in the life of Jesus is to put yourself in the shoes of one of the characters. In this very familiar parable of the sower, there is only the farmer scattering the corn and then, of course, the different types of ground it lands on. But what about the corn itself? The scene is fairly easy to imagine. The farmer sets out with his large basket of corn, walking across his field, throwing it out over the ground. Not all of it lands where he might have wished. If we for a moment imagine ourselves to be the corn, what does this parable say to us? Well, for a start, like the corn, we are all caught up together in the basket of life. The farmer didn't have four different baskets, one for each type of ground the corn was going to land on. Although we are all born into different circumstances, our essential humanity is the same. One of the things that the experience of the coronavirus has reminded us is that all people matter. The people who have often been below the radar whether the care workers, NHS staff, residents and staff in care homes and those who have kept our essential services going have suddenly been recognised as being a vital part of our society, as, as vital as anyone else. A sense of community expressed, for example, in the Thursday evening doorstep clapping has been one of the good things to come out of all of this. As a church, with our emphasis on fellowship and community, we need to play our part to help to ensure that this isn't lost after all this is over. For the corn being thrown out by the farmer, things didn't all turn out in the same way. For us, landing in the field of COVID-19, there have been different outcomes some, sadly, have found themselves or their loved ones on the hard path that led to an unexpected death, taken away, as it were, by the birds of the air called virus. Others, finding themselves on stony ground, have had their already meagre resources stretched, sometimes to breaking point. The huge increase in the number using food banks is an indication that many people just don't have the resources to survive the drought of a pandemic. 
How many businesses and jobs will be lost as we emerge from this? Back in the spring, I planted some dahlia corms in our garden. But that was before some nearby lupins and a large fuchsia bush began to take off. These are not weeds, of course, but they seem to be smothering what I've planted. In the parable, some of the corn was smothered by weeds. In the midst of this virus, some have felt overwhelmed by it all. Perhaps the stress of self-isolating or being unable to see family and friends, perhaps by anxiety about what the future holds, perhaps in tourist areas by what the easing of the lockdown will bring. And yet some corn did fall on good ground, where it flourished and produced grain as much as a hundredfold. It might be tempting at this point to suggest that all this is like online shopping companies or Zoom who have seen their profits soar during the pandemic. But perhaps it's more helpful to remind ourselves that online shopping is not the only thing that has increased during the time of this virus. The farmer knew that not all his corn would fall on good ground. He relied on the hundredfold corn to balance out his losses. One of the heartening things that has emerged from this time has been the numerous acts of kindness shown by many to others. Those who have delivered food to the housebound or gone the extra mile in caring for others in the NHS or care homes or community. If we are in the position where we find ourselves on the good ground, what do we do with our sixty or a hundredfold? Another parable of Jesus reminds, that we sh reminds us that we shouldn't just store it away in barns. So we, like the corn, are all caught up in the basket of life. This virus has landed us in different places and circumstances. As God's people, we need to remember our common humanity and live as those who are made in the image of God and who are called to be Christian disciples. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will renew that image in us and in our calling to be faithful disciples of Jesus so that we may bear the fruit of the Spirit, whether it be 60 or 100-fold, or in the less spectacular ways of the ordinary business of our everyday lives. And now we come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. Trusting in the love of God, who is our salvation and the hope of all the earth, let us pray for the needs of the world and the concerns of our hearts. And in a few moments of quiet, let us bring to the Lord our prayers and praises and petitions, rejoicing that Jesus is with us. His love is holding and enfolding us, that he is here and hears our prayers and the cry of our hearts. And so let us pray and bring to him all that is on them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, scattered like the seeds. May we be assured of God's love for us and presence with us. May we be rooted and grounded in his word and his grace. And our lives show forth the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we pray for all God's people that we may proclaim the word of God in the way we live and the love we have for our neighbours and those around us. We pray for all those who in our communities seek to serve others in Christ's name, for those who have fallen into hard ground, whose life is a struggle, and who struggle to be and become who God has called them to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who proclaim the word of God in their ministries of healing and compassion, for all those who care for those who are weak, ill or vulnerable, or those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. At this time of COVID-19 and this worldwide pandemic, we pray for all whose lives have been affected by the disease, those whose lives who have been changed forever by this illness, families who mourn those they love, and communities and people affected by the economic hardship we now face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who proclaim God's word, that we may be nourished, encouraged, nurtured and renewed, made joyful by the love of the God we serve, that each of us in our lives and living may proclaim the love and mercy of God, his goodness and his grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for your presence with us. May we trust that you are here and that you hear our prayers and that you pour upon us your Holy Spirit that we may be and become who you call us to be, bearing forth in our lives the fruit of your word through the strength of your Spirit. And so we pray, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we sing our hymn.
Our service continues as we offer these gifts and ourselves to God. Father, your word creates in us a yearning for your kingdom. Fulfill our longing and keep us in your peace for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let us present ourselves to the Lord as we offer him these gifts. For yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth, in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise, with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son, born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is given for you. At supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world 
without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. And as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. Alleluia. And so together we pray the prayer for spiritual communion. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus our Saviour who feeds his people and gives them eternal life. Though we cannot consume the gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we do receive Christ's saving presence, the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Saviour. Amen. And so let us give thanks that God comes to us, shares his life and love with us, and assures us of his presence with us always. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. And so we pray. May God bless us when all our days are grey ones and help us when we're anxious and alone. May God guide us when the path of life is hidden and give us courage that is greater than our own. May God bless us when frightening things surround us and hold us close no matter what befall. May God bring us when troubled days are over the peace that has no ending and the love that waits for all. Amen.
And now as our service draws to its close, we pray God's blessing on ourselves and all those we hold in our hearts, that he may give us the strength each day to bear forth the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace. And may we know his peace in our hearts and in our world. May God give you life through the Spirit dwelling within you. May Christ nourish and enrich you with his word and guide you with his example. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all those whom you love. And may you know his peace and presence with you today and forevermore. And so let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.